welcome back and thank you for staying with us here at Heart 7 TV. The Commonwealth of Dominica and Barbados are ahead of the race when it comes to securing vaccines for their citizens. On Tuesday, the two nations received varying quantities of the Oxford AstraZeneca from the government of India. Dominica in particular is well on its way to having 100% COVID-19 vaccination coverage, a target set by the country's Ministry of Health, Wellness and New Health Investment. Dominica received some 70,000 doses of the vaccine, enough to inoculate about 35,000 of its people. The vaccine of choice for developing countries, the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, is one of three vaccines around the world which has been tried and tested and is being widely distributed across the globe as countries seek to vaccinate their population against the dreaded virus. Neighboring islands of Dominica and Barbados are among the first countries within the region to get their hands on the vaccine, courtesy the government of India. While Dominica is one of the countries who have fared better throughout the pandemic so far, having only recorded 121 cases since it began with 11 active cases, the acquisition of the vaccines is part of its strategy in fighting the virus. Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett was there on Tuesday evening to accept the vaccines. Being the leader of a small Caribbean island with a population of 72,000 people, I did not fancy my chances of getting such a swift, positive response to my request of India's Prime Minister Nahendra Modi. One would have thought and understood that in a global pandemic such as this, a nation's size and might would have been the primary considerations. But it is to the credit of Prime Minister Modi that our request was considered on merit and the equality of our people was recognized. Also receiving vaccines from the government of India was Barbados, having received 100,000 doses. Barbados's Prime Minister Mia Motley says the shipment is part of a potential 200,000 doses for the island nation. We believe that this is a special moment and for us who have gone through what it is to live in COVID, I know that you would want us to say thank you. Let me say out front that the Prime Minister Skerritt and myself have worked very closely on this and I really want to thank him because he also, given the length of tenure that he has had in office, has been able to work closely with me to ensure that we were able to benefit from this. But as we benefit, we've also agreed that members of the OECS and indeed in Barbados's case, Trinidad and Guyana, who have helped us over the course of the last year, believe you me, Nobody has gone through this without seeking assistance. And therefore, both of us have agreed that some of the vaccines which we have received will go to our brothers and sisters in those territories within the OECS. Dominica's Foreign Minister, Dr. Kenneth Daru, says these doses are enough to vaccinate about half of the island's population. Ever since the virus raised its ugly head more than about a little over a year ago, your government has been very diligent in the fight against COVID-19. And we have spared no efforts in fighting the SARS-CoV-19 virus. So tonight, the entire population of Dominica should rest assured, should sleep better, that this proactive government of yours, who cares about the people, very humane government of yours, that your prime minister, your government has gone all out to be able to get this AstraZeneca Oxford COVID vaccine to our shores. Dominica plans to begin inoculation on February 22nd, 2021. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The parliamentary representative for Castri Southeast has chided the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party for what he calls their indecisiveness when it comes to affairs of the country. Guy Joseph was delivering remarks in the House of Assembly on Tuesday as government sought approval for an extension of the state of emergency for a 90-day period. As the House of Assembly debated the motion to extend the country's current state of emergency for 90 days, members on both sides of the House took the opportunity to dissect the other's handling of the COVID-19 situation. While opposition leader Philip J. Pierre insisted that the government was not doing enough to curb the spread of the virus, 
MP for Castri Southeast Guy Joseph sought to call out the flaws of the SLP. Guy Joseph said that the opposition had no solid plan for the country regardless of COVID-19. He contended that emotions have no place in sound decision-making. Given that we are in a year of elections, you would expect that the members opposite vying to be the government, vying to be the ones that persons would vote for, would come with a debate, a solid plan that would reflect where they would want this country to be and how they would get there. But they cannot help themselves, Mr. Speaker, but go into the same rhetoric of politics, the same rhetoric of emotion. Joseph highlighted what he calls the level of inconsistency in the SLP's approach to COVID-19. Every day, the story changes. Every day, they would do this, and tomorrow, they would do something else. That's truly a party that is led, and you can say, Silova Lachekov Pashi. According to the direction of the wind, the tail of the rooster would lean. Because, Mr. Speaker, feathers are not very strong. So they sway in the wind. Joseph insisted that the opposition does not have what it takes to lead a country or take it through such a pandemic responsibly. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Should the common entrance examination be cancelled or changed to fit the conditions and realities of the students right now? Minister for Education Dr. Gail Rigobert says no definite decision has been taken as to the future of examinations under the new reality. However, Senator Gibeon Ferdinand believes firmly that exams should be altered to fit the realities being faced currently. Although COVID-19 has changed the dynamics of education around the world, grade 6 students in St. Lucia are still preparing to seek the annual common entrance examination. Stakeholders within the education sector have made many calls to have the exam cancelled. On Tuesday, Minister for Education Dr. Gil Rigobert informed that while the option is not completely off the table, there are lots of factors which must be taken into consideration before that is done. We have had discussions regarding the scheduling of exams and the format of the common entrance exam as well. Internally, we are continuing to engage with stakeholders to determine which is the way forward within the COVID, given the COVID-19 uh, environment. Opposition Senator Gibeon Ferdinand on Wednesday explains that the government has the power to cancel common entrance altogether. Therefore, he has no idea why a definite decision as to the future of students is not being made. I think common entrance, um, as you know, the grade sixes have the, the, the exam every year. And last year there were some, some issues with administering the exam. Um, it's, it, it, it's basically the same issue. We now should have been looking ahead um, to try to modify the exam, to, to, to make it less um, summative, and less of a one-shot, and to be able to, to have students moving from the, the primary with an exit exam into the secondary program using more, um, you know, less summative and more formative evaluation and allowing students to build their, their, their profile and their grade so that we can, we can by the time the, the July comes, that they have um, something that they can, they can go through to the secondary school with. The transition should not be dependent only on a one-shot exam, especially um, in the way it's been administered. Ferdinand says, had the laptop program been continued, the country would have been in a much better position to deal with education during the pandemic. If we had done what we had to do, there is no perfect situation. The students who are going to write the exam this year would have been better off because the infrastructure that we had put in place prior to this election would have given them a better chance of accessing online learning and being able to accumulate their grades and give them a better, better shot at the exam. But going forward, I think the, the, the government and the Ministry for Education needs to appreciate the, the need 
for the, the, the method, the format of the exam to be modified. We need to move away from the one shot and to make it more um, ongoing, to make it more cumulative. That is the only way because you really don't know how bad the situation is going to get. So you must have incremental steps towards having a child attain a secondary education. Due to the pandemic, 2020's examination was multiple choice only and included concepts covered from the end of the first term. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Geneve Gonzalez. Stay with us, we have more news coming up after this break.